That was a nice little intro, wouldn't you say? Alright, give me a second. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nuke and Duke here, and welcome to Magic uh, 2015 Duels of the Planewalker. It just got released today. Special thanks to the PR for giving me a press copy of the game. So I never played uh, Magic 2014, but uh, I've been, I'm a huge uh, Magic fan back when I was younger. Uh, I think it's been 16 years since I last played Magic. Well, like, I officially was following it heavily. Like, my best deck uh, back then was... Uh, 7th edition, so I don't know what edition uh, Magic is at now, but you can see how kind of dates me back at least like 15 years of my life. <laughs> but so I don't know some of the newer uh, design of the cards or the new skills, so bear with me. And I just started this game, so you are, we're doing this just a blind, like I, I didn't have to spend a couple hours like trying to perfect this game, so we're in this together. Okay, so there's a single player here, uh, multiplayer. Uh, but you need to enter a valid deck uh, to enter multiplayer. So then basically you have to enter a tutorial to claim your starting cards for multiplayer. So you play against other people online. Uh, there's two versions of this um, video. One's going to be uh, uh, with webcam and one without webcam. If you want the webcam version, check the annotation or description. If you want the non-webcam, annotation description. Okay, there's a shop here. Uh, I think you can... See, there's booster cards uh, where you can buy cards, you know, for the game. It, okay, I want to say Hearthstone is similar to this game. Uh, a lot of Hearthstone's ideas uh, came from Magic. In fact, most card games, I would say, take some similarity from Magic. I would say Magic is like the original founding for for that. Um, excuse me if my information is wrong, but I just know Magic's been around for a long time and people loved it and a lot of games these days copy similar to what Magic has done. Uh, here you can uh, build your deck. If you're into Hearthstone, I know it's really popular right now, uh, you basically you build your own decks for it. Uh, you have a card collection, see what cards you have. Uh, I don't have anything since I just start, clicked uh, installed and started this game. Here's, here's all the cards, but uh, I can tell you, uh, I played Hearthstone for at least like 10 hours and it Magic is a more complicated game. It, uh, you got your help and options, your setting menus. I set everything up to be good for the stream and good for the the YouTube video. And here's our player profile. I think uh, this is what you have, your personas, your achievements, your titles, and then your card collection. Um, this game is for the more in depth, and then there's store locators. It's, you know, Magic is based on a real life card game, so you can actually find a store where to buy these games if you want to play real life with your friends. And you have extras here. I haven't touched it yet, but there's multiverse. I'm not sure what these are. There's leaderboards, and then there's promotions. Uh, I'll go ahead and do uh, do some single player campaign, and then some, do some multiplayer uh, based on. You know how much love and support I get on this video. I make do a full walk through the campaign in multiplayer, or do some multiplayer footage. If I'm not getting a lot of response of um, support, then I'll just play this for fun randomly on my stream. If I enjoy the game, we don't know yet until uh, until uh, I see how this video does on YouTube. I think this sounds a hopefully it's not too low. Some music going on. Okay, the first basics. Looks like we have to go through the tutorial first before we can do anything, so let's go ahead. Uh, we're learning the basics of magic, so if you're brand new to the game, this will kind of get you a little start. So you can pause this and read this if you want. I, I know the basics of the game since <laughs> I played it for several years with my friends and my cousins. My brother. Welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. That's nice. She gets to read for us, so I don't have to read. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 So to we both start off with 20 life, which is basic. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. Uh, one second, I'm gonna, I gotta answer a real quick question for one of my moderators on Twitch. Uh, Ninja, what you can do is right click the sub button down low uh, with the picture and then open to new page, copy that link and then post it in chat for them. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. 
If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing called a mulligan. <laughs> To take a closer look at your cards. Okay, so these forests are like our mana. You see this? This requires two forests to cast down this card, and uh, this requires two forests and two any other uh, mana type. So since we have so many forests, I'm gonna go ahead and take a mulligan. Uh, did she tell us where to put it? No. I right, just guess a quick. At the BH, use the bounce. You can see magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. Okay, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom out. So then there's uh, five different main colors, which is white, red, black, green, and blue. Uh, each have their own unique style and play to them. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. Okay, so we're obviously green and we're known for poor, powerful green creatures. I would say green's most OP back in my days. I don't know how it's doing now in the current Magic uh, League. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're going to need some resources. Okay, I already Magic, explained this. So what we're going to do is go ahead and play a land. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson right, Mage. This is very basic tutorials. It's easy to pick up a uh, game like... Uh, Persona in that sense. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the Alright, we'll just let him continue. Cast... So he's gonna place this land. Now he will cast It's most spell. likely some damage spell since red is known for the damage dealers and not creatures. Let's see what he casts. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. Okay, so let's take a uh, closer look. Power is the amount of damage okay. a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana cost. Sorry. To I'm skipping this tutorial, but uh, it's pretty basic right here. He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped card, mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Alright, explain this. Summoning this creature okay, so basically, oh gosh, let me talk, woman. A creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. Okay, so basically, that's your hero's... Um, attack and defense and then you, you have to tap your mana resources to summon out a creature and then uh first round you can't attack with it since it's called summoning sickness basically summed up what she said but quicker now it's our turn let's summon colonian tusker okay. to cast this spell there we go basically it's just a two two this or three three power Toughness are three three, more than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. So it's summoning sickness. So we can't attack. Sorry, I misread it, but it's a three three. This is just a little description about the card, but uh, it doesn't have any special abilities. So let's go ahead and uh, end our turn, and we have a timer bomb left. You can see there. Now, mage will play a land and then attack us with the crazed goblin. The crazed goblin has to attack because its rules say it oh, okay. must. Really? I didn't know that. That's actually interesting. That's a terrible card then. Uh, Crazy God doesn't attack uh, each turn available. Oh, that's terrible. He has to attack every turn. So we'll just block and destroy it. Now, you're going to notice when I destroy his card, it's going to be different than the way it does in Hearthstone. Um, the damage doesn't stick on to my creature. So what I'm going to do is... When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. Now you have a chance to respond with creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a creature on the battlefield that will block very well. Okay, so when he attacks, the card has to tap. It looks like this, and we'll go ahead and block it. Uh, when we take damage, after the end of the round, everything resets so we don't lose uh, defense at all. Uh, it, everything happens in one turn, so that's what's different between this and Hearthstone, where Hearthstone, like, once you hurt someone's defense, it's permanent. So we'll go ahead and block this guy. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with summoning sickness can block. Block the crazed goblin! 
Okay, let's go ahead and block it. How the heck do I block it? Block. Right click to block. Okay, right click that and block. Click on test and declare block. Okay. I clicked on them. Click on your tusker to declare block and then click the crazy. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and initiate block phase. During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed Goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. There we go. Okay. See, we took one damage there. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from turn to turn. Okay, so, so that's what I just said. Uh, basically, in a turn, he will heal and it'll uh, be full health like that. That's what I like about magic. It's uh, with Hearthstone, you have to kind of calculate if you took damage, and I guess it's complexity of that nature, but I'm just used to old school style. Okay, we have three, can't cast anything. So we'll go ahead and attack him. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Man. Uh, let's go ahead and get, get hit this guy. There we go. Attack. He can't block it unless he has a card in his hand. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. There we go, take three damage. Bam, baby. You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. Alright, so, so far as I say, this tutorial is pretty good for, uh beginners so it's easy I say it's a lot easier to get into this game well it's a lot easier to learn magic because it was when you first start magic it was kind of more difficult but after like a couple games you get used to it uh, it's able to attack each turn if well okay this uh, vampire will attack each turn has a weak defense uh, deals combat damage player put a 1-1 one, one counter on it okay so if this zombie attacks me and deals damage, uh, he gets a 1-1 one, one creature on his uh, side. So I definitely don't want him to attack me or he'll get more creatures to have to uh, deal with. So let's put down a land. Uh, all we can do is summon this creature. Let me summon him. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Yes. But... Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your rumbling Bayloth yet because it has summoning sickness. Okay, let's go ahead and attack. You can withdraw if you don't want to attack. It's important to know that in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Yep, so he gets to decide if he wants to block or take damage. We can't just dictate that. So he blocked. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. Oh, you know what? I don't think the game sounds loud enough. My bad. You guys should tell me when you guys can't hear the game sounds too low. Okay, so let me sum up what she said shortly. Can you guys hear better now? Hopefully. Okay, so uh, let's say you attack with an 8-8 creature. No, uh, uh, you can block with 1-1 creature and uh, those extra damage uh, goes nowhere except to the creature. So unless you have trample, which means it... Uh, I'll explain that if we ever get to trample. But So it's, it's wise to kind of block with a weaker creature so you don't take damage to your main person. Try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Okay, I don't know why we don't have any cards. I guess it's a surprise card. Okay. 
So we're gonna try something different. Or she wants us to try something different. Now, attack with both of your creatures. Okay, we'll go ahead and attack with both, see what he does. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops. So he'll take seven damage. Awesome. Okay, I can see what the computer is trying to get us to do. Because we're, I think we're tricking our opponent by showing that he can attack us next turn. But uh, it's still our turn, so we'll put down another land and summon this creature, which is kind of like, oh, I can't attack him since he has a stronger creature. So that's what I would assume. During the main phase, after you'll be in great shape. There we go. Now we just place this creature that can be a defense for us, kind of mind trick. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Things are looking good. Thank you. Uh, we'll just go ahead and block with this. Right, block that, please. Uh, you should be able to kill him, and this creature should survive, so we'll block. All you need to do now is attack with everything. Go ahead. Oh, we'll place land next to him. Uh, yeah, we need to attack with everything to kill him, huh? Okay. Unless he has a card up his sleeves. It says he has three cards in his hand, but I think we'll be golden. Or five cards in his hand, unless he has something. I doubt it. This is a tutorial. In quest two, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. Twitch Nukem Duke wins! Alright. Let's go ahead and, uh,. Move on to the next game. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a two-game part of this. It's kind of, so it's guess it's getting us to more complicated parts of the game. Hang on. Give me a second. Alright, let's go to the next quest. Wow, isn't she an attractive one? She's a keeper. I pause if you need to. For your second quest, you'll be using a black deck. Black's specialty is removing your opponent's creatures. Your opponent is Azure Mage. Okay. Ooh, block deck is be interesting. It's a lot of sacrifice and destroying. We arrived to this game already in progress. As you can see, a lot of dueling has gone on so far. But with no creatures on the battlefield, it'll take a miracle to survive the next oh, wow, few we turns. Wow, we both have four health. It's Azure Mage's turn, and she attacks with her last remaining creature, bringing your life total to oh two. Oh my gosh. We're good now. It's not looking good. Okay, we both have four life, and uh, she's gonna get us down to two right now. I have no cards in my hand. This looks promising. You've drawn Assassinate, a sorcery. Sorceries are cards intended to be used a single time. Okay. So it looks like we got a sorcery. In magic, your turn split into five phases. Sorcerer can cast either in the two main phases, which is the began in combat and after combat. So you kind of... Assassinate is a card that can destroy a creature of your choice, as long as it's tapped. Right. Since you're at two life, you'd better use it on Azure Mage's creature before it kills you. Can you can see it's a destroy target tap creature. So we'll go ahead and destroy that. There we go. And then we'll lose the sorcery it goes in our graveyard, which means uh, discarded now, cards. As your mage will cast some spells. Divination allows the player to draw two cards, a signature blue spell. Yeah. Blue can draw a lot more cards than normal. Uh oh, what'd you put down? Okay. Now your opponent has a creature that has a special oh, ability. Flying. 
Zoom in on the card to find. Okay, so what flying is basically is uh, you can only block. You can attack uh, with, uh, with flying card and it can only be blocked with uh, other flying creatures or a card says it can block flying creatures. So this is bad if I have a land creature where I'm pretty much useless. And flying creatures can also block land creatures. So this is a, a pretty decent card in my opinion. But for three mana, yeah, it's a, that's reasonable. Without another assassinate card, you have no way to destroy Azure Mage's Windrake. What will you do to oh, stay alive? Oh, this looks good, actually. Okay, let me show you what this card does. So this is a 2-3 flying. It can block other flyings, which is counters to his card. Uh, Death Touch. I'm not sure what Death Touch is, so I'll do more info, but lifelink means, uh, I think, how many damage I deal or how much damage I receive. I gain life from that. Well, let's click more info. Okay, flying. I, we know that. Alright, Death Touch. Creatures that deal damage by something with Death Touch are destroyed. Oh, really? Wow, okay. So if you deal damage with this card, it destroys the other card. That's pretty good. Lifelink. Alright, damage dealt by something with Lifelink also okay, gains life, so that's what I said. So it, this has to deal damage to gain life. Okay. Very good. This is actually an excellent card what I need. Summoning sickness can't do anything, so we'll end our turn. Oh, what's that? Right. Oh god, eight seven flying? Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the game's not gonna make me lose on a tutorial, and it's gonna give me some encounter this. But dang, dude. That's so good. Now you're in serious trouble. That Goliath Sphinx can kill you with one hit. But the good news is that your vampire Nighthawk can kill any creature it deals damage to because it has death touch. Okay. So I still have to block that. Why did he not? Oh, because he didn't attack me since I have death touch and lifelink. Alright. So we got a 4 3 doesn't do anything, it's just basic 4-3. Uh, we'll go ahead and play it. Hmm, I don't know if I want to attack. Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your vampire Nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block the Goliath Sphinx with. Okay, so this game finally gives us a choice and we have actions consequence. If I attack and he does not block, I deal two damage to him, but uh and I gain two health, which puts me at four, but then my creature's uh, tapped, so I can't block with it. So if he attacks me with eight, seven, I'm completely dead. So this game is trying to teach me to not attack, basically. It's strategy. So we'll go ahead and skip our attack. And then now we, have, we can block. Okay. So we are going to block that. And it should destroy this card and we gain health take out his strong creature he didn't he saved his drake to for defense so watch the magic happen see the boat goes in discard pile i gain four health you've drawn a powerful sorcery rise from the grave can reanimate creatures that are in a graveyard Now's your chance to take that Goliath Sphinx as your own. Ooh, I can take his card? That's awesome. I'm taking it. Yes, it is now my own. <laughs> it appears safe to attack with your zombie okay, He has to block with that Drake and then he'll have no creatures, so we'll attack. Because if he doesn't block, he'll die. Or swamp. Okay, I guess we just attack with everything. We'll overkill him for negative. Bam, baby. 
As you play more magic, you'll run into many kinds of spells and creature abilities. Look for spells that fit your play style. In Quest 3, we'll learn about spells with more permanent effects. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed part one. <laughs>